Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing, we're continuing my 2022 year-end top tens, as we're gonna look at the uh, my number two fighter in a hundred and thirty-pound super featherweight division. He is the undefeated and newly crowned IBF super featherweight champion, Shavkat Rakimov. Uh, Rakimov was coming into the year, coming off of a 2021, a promising one, where he had, um, where he was supposed to challenge Jojo Diaz for the IBF title, and um, Diaz came in overweight. They still, the fight went forward uh, for the vacant belt. And Diaz was the favorite coming in, and they ended up fighting to a draw. So a lot of people were, you know, excited to see what Rakimov could pull off. Then, uh, towards the end of the year, he had been guaranteed a mandatory title shot uh, for the IBF title. So um, he was first in line of two contenders. Well, a fight with Kanichi Ogawa was being discussed, but Ogawa was allowed to, to make a mandatory defense first. Uh, while that was going on, um, uh, in that fight took place in June. Rakimov was waiting around, and Joe Cordina pulled off a monster upset, knocking Ogawa out hot and cold, one of the best knockouts of the year in an upset, as he became the new champion. So, Rakimov was gear gearing up to fight Joe Cordina, and they were going to fight on the Dimitri Bival, Gilberto Ramirez, the zone undercard. But, um, Cordina had to pull out with an injury, and since there was another mandatory waiting in Zelfa Barrett, the, w, the IBF decided to strip Cordina of the title, and uh, they had enough time to put together Rakimov and Zelfa Barrett for the vacant IBF championship. So they would fight on the Bival Ramirez undercard. And early on, you know, I picked Rakimov to win, but early on, you know, and the, probably the first half of the fight, you know, Zelfa Barrett was in complete control. After six rounds, he was probably winning like four rounds of two, but he had the extra point for uh, an early knockdown on an uppercut. He was boxing well, he was moving his feet, but the thing was is he was moving and boxing, you know, and, and it just, he had, uh, he was moving around so much, you know, trying to avoid uh, Rakimov's, uh, you know, rugged style. That he, he got tired and Rakimov continued to land on the body and get closer and closer. And finally, heading into the ninth round, it was it was close, but Barrett still had the lead. But he apparently had, you know, maybe injured a, a his leg or something, but he was getting worn down is the key thing. And um, I, Rakimov kept coming forward and finally, in the ninth round, he caught up to him and, and uh, you know, broke him down, hurt him, and stopped him in the ninth round as he captured the vacant IBF championship with that victory. So, given his performance, you know, uh, stopping Azinga Fazil back in 2020 and then a 2021 draw with Jojo Diaz, who was considered to be one of the top guys in the division at the time, and then the knockout of Barrett, he's my number two fighter here now. So, going forward, he has a mandatory title defense due against the undefeated Joe Cordina. Um, that is going to be some, somewhere, I'd say it's probably going to take place in the spring sometime, maybe April. Um, and to be honest, I think Rakimov is going to beat Joe Cordina. I think Cordina, uh, you know, got lucky uh, to land the big shot that he landed against Ogawa. And um, not trying to take anything away from him, I just don't know how good he is to be honest if Cordina beats him great but I think that um I think that Rakimov is gonna is gonna get the victory I think he'll stop Joe Cordina and he's gonna push forward towards um something else you know uh you know later in the year and that that's kind of up in the air on what that something else could be you know you have Zelfa Barrett there you know a rematch with him maybe uh maybe a fight with Ogawa at some point um, there's guys like Roger Gutierrez and other guys like that that are with the zone as well. So it's it's kind of up in the air to see what Rakimov is going to do um, in the second half of the year. But the first half of the year, he's got Cordina lined up. And I think he gets another win over a top 10 guy. And actually, Cordina's in the top five right now because of his win over Ogawa. I think, you know, Rakimov is going to be threatening for that top spot. And it's going to be interesting to see who the top guy is by the end of the year, but I think Rakimov is going to be one of the serious players um, at 130.
30. I, I don't see Cordina beating him, um, you know, and uh, and I think he's going to be up there banging around for the top spot. So we'll see what happens. But that's it. That's what I got. Uh, that's my number two super featherweight in the world right now at 130 pounds. Uh, as my 2022 year-end top tens continue. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.